In the last video, we would have looked at atomic theory, and from that we learned a little bit about the subatomic particles. Um, you should make sure that you're familiar with each of these. So we have protons, and this is the symbol that I use, neutrons, this is the symbol, and the electron. Now the sign here connects to the charge of that particle, so protons are positive, neutrons have no charge, and electrons are negative. Their location is important also. Notice that both protons and neutrons are located within the nucleus. Electrons surround the nucleus. One other thing to mention is the mass. We use a unit called an atomic mass unit. We can talk in class about where that is derived from. But it's important to note that protons and neutrons have basically the same mass of one atomic mass unit, whereas electrons are extremely light. Um, this was the estimate that came out of Millikan's research from the oil drop experiment showing that it's a tiny fraction of the mass of either a proton or a neutron. Now the periodic table is, is something that we're going to connect to now. There's a lot of information in the periodic table. We're going to talk specifically about what is it that we see here. If you're looking at an element lithium, what are those numbers that we see in the periodic table? So first of all, here's lithium now, kind of zooming in. The number that's at the top is the atomic number. What the atomic number is is the number of protons in the atom. And typically, it would also be the number of electrons, assuming that the atom is not charged, that it is neutral. Let's practice this. If we have 18 protons, what element would this be? So make sure that you have your periodic table out and are able to answer these questions. For the first one, 18 protons, this would be argon. 44 electrons, we would assume that there is uh, no charge on the atom. So in that case, if it had 44 electrons, it would be the element ruthenium. Atomic number of 90, this one is thorium. Now a challenge. If it has 54 electrons and a negative one charge, then it has 53 protons. Okay, one more electron than proton. The atomic number is based on the number of protons. So um, iodine is the element and it has a negative one charge. This is a way to represent the symbols for an isotope. Um, we're going to look more at isotopes. The atomic number is going to go in the bottom, whereas the mass number goes in the top. Here's an example for helium. Helium has two protons because it's atomic number two. Atomic number goes in the bottom. Um, helium also has two neutrons. Now here I've drawn a total of um, four particles within the nucleus. It would also have four electrons floating around somewhere, maybe one, two, three, four like this. Um, to cancel out the positive, um, or I'm sorry, that's not right. It would have just a total of two electrons, excuse me. The mass is four because that is the sum of the protons plus the neutrons. So definitions here, the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom is atomic number. The total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus is the mass number. We're also going to talk about something that is a weighted average of the masses of the naturally occurring isotopes of an element, and this is referred to as the average atomic mass. Let's do some more practice with mass number. Remember that mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons is the mass number. So here's an example. Nitrogen has seven protons. We don't know the number of neutrons, but the mass number is 14. So 14 minus 7 equals x. x is equal to 7 as well, 7 neutrons. Next, we want to look at this element. It has 38 protons and 50 neutrons. Um, in this case, the element based on the number of protons is strontium. 38 
plus 50. If we add up these two, that will equal the mass number, which in this case is 88. So the mass number and the element, which is strontium. So a quick summary. Atomic number is protons. Mass number is protons plus neutrons. And if the atom is not charged, the atomic number is also equal to the number of electrons. So again, to touch on isotopes, the definition is that it's an atom of an element that has a different number of neutrons. The charge is not affected because neutrons are not charged. The mass, however, will change because each neutron has a mass of one. That's one atomic mass unit. So anytime you add or remove neutrons, you change the mass. Here's an example of the element lead. Lead has many forms here, and this is showing the number of neutrons involved in each of these. Now how do we find that? If you look at the isotope notation, if you take 204 and you subtract from 82, it gives you 122. Here if you take 206 minus 82, it gives you 124 and so forth. Now it also shows us that uh, the forms of lead are not equally abundant. This form down here, lead 208, is much more common than lead 204, for example. So this one is probably not very stable. Okay, it's not very abundant because it's most likely not very stable, whereas this example for lead 208 is probably the most stable. Now let's look at some examples here of different elements. Um, just looking at the symbol, let's determine the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Alright, so the number of protons is decided by the atomic number, so that would be equal to 11. And the number of neutrons, keep in mind that protons plus neutrons equals this number, which is the mass number, it's 23. So that means we must have 12 neutrons, 23 minus 11. The number of electrons is equal to the atomic number as long as it's not charged, and all of these have no charges shown, so they're all neutral. So in each of these, the number of protons is going to be equal to the number of electrons. All right, copper 64, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Starting with the atomic number in the bottom, it has 29 protons. It also has 29 electrons. If we were, wanted to find the number of neutrons, we would take 64 minus 29, and that gives us 35. Lastly, for silver, same idea here. Um, the number of protons is 47, same as the number of electrons. The difference between 108 and 47 in this case is 61. And that's how you would do this. Now, average atomic mass is a calculation that we're going to do. It's a weighted average, and you may have learned about that in a different class. Um, it also explains why some of the elements on the periodic table are not whole numbers. So here's an example of carbon. Carbon has here listed three different isotopes. And this is a, these are the steps how to calculate the average atomic mass. So you follow these steps. You convert the percent abundance into a decimal. So here we have percent abundance. I'm going to convert it to a decimal. I'm going to do that by moving the decimal place two places to the left. So it would be 0.9893. Move the decimal place two places to the left. 0.1, I'm sorry, 0107. Now here it says trace. Basically this is so small we can ignore it. Um, in fact, it's like 10 to the negative 12th percentage, so it's, uh, or somewhere in that range. It's really tiny, so we can just ignore that. So we finish step one. Step two is to multiply the decimal by the mass number. So we're going to take this number times the mass, which is 12, this number times the mass, which is 13. Uh, when you do that, for the first example, um, 0.9893 times 12 gives us 11.8716 and 0 0.0107 times 13 is 0.1391. Okay. The last step is that you sum the products and that is equal to the average atomic mass. So I'll take these two numbers, 
I'm going to add them together. And what I get is 12.0107. The unit is atomic mass units. Now if you're to look at the periodic table, and by the way, this is our final answer. If you're to look at the periodic table, carbon says it has a mass of 12.011. And our answer on the last page was 12.0107. So basically it's just a rounded answer. So we got that one right and we are happy. Next example is with lead. So I'd have you follow the same steps again and I'll show you the answer here in a moment. So here's our work for each of the steps. I converted the percentage to a decimal. I multiply the decimal times the mass, and these are the products that I get. Now I'm going to find the sum of each of these products, and I get 207.241. Um, this is in atomic mass units. I ran out of space here, but that's the, the answer. And by the way, if you look at lead um, on the periodic table, right here, it's around 207.2, which is the same answer we have. And by the way, this is a 0, not a 6.